Did you know that you can enhance your workflows and improve your Airtable system using AI that is natively available inside of Airtable? There's no need for you to communicate with ChatGPT, integrate with Zapier. You can do all of this natively inside of Airtable if you know how to access AI. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking this down for you so that you can really take your workflows to the next level. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's my mission here to help you unlock the full potential of your no-code tools and Airtable is at the base of everything that we do here on this channel. Now, before I hop into the heart of things, I first want to invite you to join me for some Airtable templates. My team has put together five key templates that are the most common use cases that we see with our clients. And you can get those templates absolutely free and get spun up in Airtable almost immediately. This is including the back end, including interfaces, and we've accompanied each template with a unique video to help you get up and running quickly. So go ahead and grab those templates at gapconsulting.io slash templates. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on into my screen. And we are going to be taking a look at my three favorite AIs within Airtable. And some of these are brand spanking new because Airtable just released Airtable Assistant not too long ago. Now, I should preface this by saying that all of the data that I'm working with here has been generated by AI, so I am not claiming any of these numbers as fact. I would encourage you to look this up and, uh, and do your own research if you care about the validity of the information that we're presenting. But here's my starting point. I have authors and I have books, right? So I've got, uh, on the book side, we've got a title for each book. We have a number of copies sold. Again, all of this generated by AI. And this is connected to authors. And then on the author side, we're tracking first and last name, able to calculate the full name. We've got the year born, the net worth, and then a link to the books that these authors have written. So how can we integrate AI here? Well, the first thing we might do is take a look at the new assistant. So I'm very excited about this assistant. It's available both in the data layer, but also in the interfaces layer. So if I wanted to add a new table here, let's say we were a library and I've got my authors and I've got my books already built, but I wanna create a checkout. Well, I can actually pop open my little AI assistant and say, uh, hi, can you create a new table for us that allows books to get checked out like in a library? I have not actually used this assistant yet. I've uh, only just barely tinkered with it, so I'll be really interested to see how this plays out. But as you can see, this AI is working at least to generate a new table for us inside of our database. And I'm not lifting a finger aside from just typing. And here you go, you can actually see this happening in real time. Uh, they've got our checkouts here, which is tracked with a checkout ID, it links to the book, we've got a checkout date, due date, return date, who it was checked out by, and then we even have an overdue status. And this is an interesting thing because this is using AI. So this is very meta, AI inside of AI, but it's created this special field for us that's going to use AI to uh, basically determine whether or not the book is overdue. So let's see how well this works. I'm gonna go ahead and create a checkout here. And you know, just the auto number logs the next one. Let's say I check out a book, um, let's go with Misery. I checked it out uh, April 1st, and let's say it was a two week checkout, so it was due back on the 14th, and the return date is outstanding. So I have not yet uh, returned it, and it was checked out by me. And you can see here that right now, this is saying that the overdue fields uh, are not complete, they're empty. So let's take a look at the AI and what it put in here. And it's basically saying that, yes, you're either gonna say that this is overdue or not, and you're going to look at the due date and the return date for output. So what I don't love about this is, of course, if I have not returned it, 
Um, it's overdue because today is past the due date. So I don't absolutely love uh, the way they built this, the way the AI just generated it. But again, this is still kind of early days with AI. I mean, this is a brand new feature, this AI assistant here that I've accessed and had it add a new table. So, okay, maybe this particular field isn't 100% working for us right now, but it's still pretty good. It built an entire table for me and I didn't have to tell it anything other than link me to the book, right? I think that's all I said. I said, uh, can you create a new table for this database that allows books to get checked out? I didn't even particularly call out that you need the link to books and yet it did it. So this is really, really powerful for builders because it doesn't require us to go in and manually do all this stuff. And let's be honest, this AI is going to get way smarter over time. This is week one, folks. So if you don't love this output, I feel pretty confident that by week two, week three, week 10 or 20, this thing is going to be rocking and rolling. So definitely start building with the AI assistant if you're not already. That's going to take us to number two, which is still using the AI assistant. But now instead of looking at the data schema here, the, the back end, I want to get into interfaces. This AI assistant can apparently help us with interfaces. Now, I haven't done this myself yet, as I said, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. We're going to say, can you build an interface using this data? I'd like to see the books we have in the library. Let's see what it can do. I really haven't tried this out yet uh, all that much. I'm Again, just some very light lifts. So this is kind of a, a live test. I should point out while this is spinning up here that this is a new feature. Number one, you have to have AI enabled in your workspace. And also you have to have the AI assistant uh, granted. You have to have that access. It's currently in beta, as you see right here in beta. So, uh, you know, you might have to uh, wait for this to be unlocked in your workspace. And you definitely have to have AI toggled on in your workspace, which might cost you a little bit extra every month on your plan. So check this out though. It put together an interface page for us, uh, library books overview. In this list view, we can see that the book has uh, listed out the authors and the copies sold. Interestingly though, it hasn't uh, given us the book title, which is probably the most important thing in that. So of course we can click in here and add that information, or I could just follow up and say, can you add the book title to the interface list? Let's see if it is smart enough to make these updates. Of course, I could, as I said, manually come in here and update it here. But if we can just talk to the AI, isn't that easier? And look at that. Just like that, it brought in the additional information. And it's even giving us follow-ups. Create a dashboard for books. What is the checkout status of books? Uh, which authors have published multiple books in the library? Also notice that it's included filters and things here. So this AI tool is going to really enhance your building, not only on the back end, but also on the interfaces, how your team is interacting with the Airtable data. I think this is really important to highlight because I still talk to a lot of clients who haven't really leaned into interfaces and they've been out for a few years now and they are the most powerful way to empower your team to interact with your Airtable data and get work done. If you're not leaning on interfaces, this is your wake up call. AI can build it for you. It's even easier than it ever was before. Now that's going to take me to my third most favorite AI tool natively available in Airtable. And for this, I'm going to flip into a different example. I've built here an invoice example table. And you would have seen earlier that we have these fields that we can use AI with to generate the output. But did you know that we can actually extract data from PDFs inside of Airtable? Here's what I'm doing here. I'm going to drop in an attachment here. It's going to be an invoice PDF and I want to extract the invoice number and I also want to extract the invoice total. So I'm going to create a new one here. It's going to be a number field and you see this little star right here. This is indicating to me that I can use this field in tandem with AI to generate values in the field. And by the way, if you don't know what fields are available with AI, all you have to do is a quick AI search here. Notice that email comes up here because AI is in the word email, but uh, just 
pretend that's not there. We've got currency, we've got long text, we have multiple select, number, percent, and single select options. These all have AI compatibility or availability. So for us, I'm gonna actually use currency and I'm going to toggle on to generate the values with AI. And I'm gonna say here, uh, total from invoice. And we're going to have an option of either generating automatically or manually. And so in this case, I will manually do it because my other one, my uh, invoice number is generating uh, automatically. So we're gonna get to see both of them in action. Uh, we can also toggle on allowing AI to access the internet. This is going to come with a warning that this will consume additional credits. Uh, and you can see the preview for estimates. Always double check any AI generated content. And we probably should have started there, right? AI can hallucinate. We never want to just trust it uh, implicitly. So let's make sure we're always double checking this information. But here's what we can do. We write custom instructions for the AI in this field. And we will say something like, please extract the total from the invoice here and we can insert fields. This is where I think it's so cool because yes, we can insert fields to look at other data in our Airtable database, but did you know that you could pull it from a PDF? That is super powerful. So we're going to reference a PDF and I'm gonna pop open a PDF here. Let's actually just pop this up. I've just opened it up. This was built for me by AI. As I said, everything in this video has been generated by AI, except for me. Uh, but here we go. We've got a simple invoice. We have an invoice number here and we have a date. We have who it's you know going billed to. We have some line items and then we have the total amount. So we want it to extract $1,700 and zero cents if it does its job. Let's go ahead and create this field. And I'm going to drop that PDF in right here. So I'm going to grab that little sample invoice and plop it in right there. And automatically, remember this one is set to be automatic. This is generating the invoice number. So the AI is scanning that PDF document and extracting the invoice number. And so here it is, NCB 2025-0420. So let's go ahead and open that PDF again. NCB 2025-0420, dashes included, it perfectly extracted that information from the PDF. But this one over here is waiting for us to tell it to generate. So all we have to do is push that little generate button. It's doing its magic. AI is doing its thing. And just like that, you can see that this was generated by AI and it properly extracted $1,700 from the total of the invoice. And this is pretty smart because there's a lot of numbers in that invoice, but it knew which one was the total. Now, why do I really love these AI fields? It's because if you were to formulaically build a, an output, you cannot edit that number, right? If you write a formula, if you use a rollup field, if you do a lookup field, you cannot change what that information is presenting because it's just like part of the schema, part of the structure of the database. But an AI field, it generates a number which you can then edit. So if I didn't agree with this, which happens, AI can hallucinate, we know this, maybe this number was 0421, well, check this out. I can actually edit this number. It's not like a formula. I can edit the information that AI produces here. So if it's actually 1750, I can edit that. So of course, AI got it absolutely correct in both of these examples, but it's really cool to know that you're not stuck taking that value and using it, right? You can take that value and, and change it and adapt it. And so this is just an incredibly powerful new feature inside of Airtable. So we took a look at three amazing ways to use AI with Airtable. Again, we are not having to integrate outside of the Airtable system here. This is available right inside of Airtable. Again, that assistant that I featured in the first two, that is currently in beta. So if you don't have access, reach out to Airtable, check it out, and make sure you've toggled AI on in your workspaces in order to get this powerful functionality. I hope you got a ton of value from the video. Of course, if you did, we'd love it if you could subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Swing by our website, of course, if you have any questions, but most importantly, keep on building.